Hello everyone, welcome to another Monday movie, I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week I'd like to briefly walk you through some of the deeper aspects of using the mental ray ambient occlusion uh, map. Now I've talked about it in the past in some of my Monday movies and it's a very powerful map but I don't think we've ever really addressed it head on looking at how you might implement it as part of a scene, perhaps even entirely replacing a pre-computed lighting setup. So let's take a look at this scene that I've built here. All I have here is a teapot sitting on top of a plane, both of which having a basic material. And I've created this sort of complex sphere type thing, uh, just kind of throwing it together using a complex material. And we're going to see how we can use ambient occlusion in each one of these settings. The first is using it on the base plane and on the teapot. So I'm going to take this gray material right here and we're going to apply it to the teapot and to the floor. Just click drag. And in this basic gray material, I'm going to go to my diffuse swatch box and we're going to select ambient reflective occlusion. Now if you don't see this here, odds are it's because you have not uh, enabled the mental ray renderer and you're still in scan line. So you'll want to switch that out. I'm going to double click on ambient reflective occlusion and then I'm going to take a render to show you kind of what it does to our scene right off the bat. Now I'm not using any lights and I'm not using final gather. I'm not using any other special effects except for this material. And notice how fast it went. This material only takes a few seconds in order to render and already it adds sort of this soft lighting effect to our scene. Now, if I wanted to, I could adjust some of the parameters here in order to sort of tweak the effect. For starters, we can make it uh, a much more subtle effect using the samples. Right now it's set to 16 by default, and that sets sort of the graininess that you see right here. It sets the level of quality of this effect. If we were to turn it up to say 128, we'd see a much finer effect. There wouldn't be this graininess. If, for example, we were taking a, a test render for an animation, this might be set to more like 8 or 6. The, these bright and dark swatches here determine the two colors that are being traded off. Right now, bright is set to white. So these areas out here that are not encountering any geometry, just they're pure white. These areas under here, like just in that crack between the teapot and the floor, it's very dark because almost all of the samples all 16 of them are running into geometry in the teapot and vice versa. What makes this powerful and what we're going to see in a minute when I get to this dirt grass ball thing is how you can use this map as part of a layer in a material. So next we have the spread and you generally won't alter this control at all. It just handles how the rays, how each one of these samples is cast off of the geometry. When it's set to 1, it's a perfect hemisphere. When it's set to 0, it's all perfectly normal along the geometry. So you generally don't want to set this too low. Just leave it at 0.75. And without getting into some of this deeper stuff, which you won't be using very often, I'd like to talk a little bit about max distance. So it's 0 by default, which says infinite. That means that this material should look as far as the geometry in your scene extends, looking for geometry that is possibly occluding an area. So way far off in the distance, if I had another plane with another teapot and another dirt ball 10 miles up above all of this, this max distance says that those rays should still extend all the way up and it could possibly be occluding this. If I were to set this to a more reasonable value like 5 and take another render, you'd see this soft shadowing effect become a little bit more subtle and constrained. Let's take a look. So now you can see that just barely we're seeing this effect coming into play. Just barely beneath our two objects and a little bit here in the teapot. So this material is very powerful by itself, but what if we wanted to sort of massage it into an already defined material? like this ball here. So I'm going to turn my maximum distance back down to zero. 
and I'm going to select that ball material all the way up. So this is just a standard material. Now when we think about it, it's possible to mix this in as a blend material to say as it gets darker we want to blend into a shadow material. But that may not be the best case here because we're using displacement maps and bump maps which themselves could affect the way that the occlusion is set up. So what I'm going to do is go into my mix map and I'm going to create a new layer in the mix map by clicking up here mix and I'm going to scroll down to mix so I'm going to create a mix map that is composed in part of the original mix map. Keep my old map as a sub map I'm going to click OK and now you see that the mix map is in the dark that's not where we want it I'm going to swap it out color one should be black Oh, there we go. So I, sorry, I didn't need to, swip, so to switch it actually. So if you can see it, that means that it's in the right place. So for areas that are dark, it will be dark. So mix amount, we're going to set this map as the ambient reflective occlusion. It's going to span between black and white. It's going to mix between the two materials. And 16 samples, that's just fine. OK. That looks just fine. So we did need to swap it, so now we can see it in the middle. Let's take another render and see what this looks like. And there's the effect that we're looking for, especially out here along these bumps and ridges. You'll notice that they're now much more accentuated. And that's because some, just some, of the samples are striking other little mountain ranges on this object. And so then that is creating the, the darkening effect, these fake shadows. So I encourage you to think about using the ambient occlusion map whenever you're taking a render and thinking, wow, you know, I really wish I could make these details pop. Ambient occlusion is a really powerful map. And the fact that it chooses between either two swatches or two maps makes it very versatile, whether you're applying it to a character, to a prop, or to an environment. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday Movie. You can find all of my Monday Movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website www.mrbluesummers.com.